2017's It is a classic coming-of-age horror flick based on a Stephen King novel. How does it stack up against the 1990 version, though? We're going to find out which version floats my boat more on Movie Feuds. It was a made-for-TV two-part miniseries that had a nice assortment of network talent. Night Court's Harry Anderson, Simon and Simon's Tim Reed, who was also later in Sister Sister. He apparently likes to take on roles that have redundant titles. The highlight, outside of the villain Pennywise, is easily the late John Ritter. Unfortunately, none of the acting is very good. It comes off like a bad soap opera. The first half of the movie works much better as it's more focused on the kids. Seth Green and Jonathan Brandis give the most memorable performances but they pale in comparison to the work done in the 2017 picture. There's definitely not as much star power on display, but it doesn't matter, as the kids in the self-titled Losers Club really sell their roles. They talk how me and my immature buddies talked when we were 13. It was relatable. Stranger Things' Finn Wolfhard was also appropriately cast here in the most recognizable for me. The whole tone of this film mirrors that of the Netflix aforementioned series. More time is dedicated to Beverly Marsh's character, played by Sophia Lillis. At one point, Richie jokingly refers to her as Molly Ringwald, a spot-on reference as she looks very similar. Let's stop clowning around, though, and get to the main attraction. I'm sorry. Tim Curry was basically the sole reason It worked on television. He scared neglected children around the world as they watched him on TV behind their parents' backs. He was far more clown-like, too, in both appearance and mannerisms. If Bill Skarsgård couldn't make women fawn all over him like his brother Alexander can, then he's gonna have to scare the fuck out of him instead. This is very much a Jack Nicholson to Heath Ledger Joker comparison here, as Curry and Skarsgård play these parts very differently. The makeup and lighting is also far more dramatic in 2017. It's hard to believe any child could think this clown is even remotely friendly. Hey kid! You wanna come down in the sewer and play with me and get your arm fucking ripped off? Everybody floats down here! <laughs> We're having a good time. Get down here! Sorry, sorry, that wasn't cool. That wasn't cool. Just come on, come on down, come on down. I want to eat you. Skarsgård puts on a soft, childish tone early in the film, but as the movie progresses, the effects take center stage. And that's not a knock at all. I love how this character ramps up over the course of the picture. There's also way more variety here. He doesn't show up just as a creepy-ass clown, but that of an evil portrait, a zombie, and many more nightmare-induced creations. Come on, let's float on down to round two. The story of it, or lack thereof, is certainly rife with metaphors. Uh, fighting your fears, confronting them, and such. And we follow this group of miscreants as they have to band together to take on their greatest obstacles. Alone they are weak and easy pickings for a mysterious creature that gets very little backstory. All that's known is he feeds on fear and he's old as shit. He's killed a lot of people before, hundreds, potentially thousands. And this happens every 27 years. In the eerie department, both of these movies, 27 years apart. Yeah, I did the math. When Bill's younger brother Georgie goes presumably missing, Bill is determined to find him. He quickly learns, along with his friends, that the disappearance of kids is not as cut and dry as the town would have them think. Not that the town really helps with anything, it's a bunch of crazy people that have many skeletons in their closet. They're just as scared as these young kids. Where these two versions deviate is the approach of the story. 2017 keeps things simple and focuses on the kids' battle with the beast, whereas the miniseries follows the lives of the Losers Club all the way through adulthood. I haven't read the book, but I assume the miniseries goes along in the same manner, where these kids fight it, 27 years later they grow up and they have to revisit their past. It's an interesting take. I love that they're struggling with these inner demons all these years later. Unfortunately, the way the story is told is not only messy, but also a complete snore at times. Each character, as both a child and adult, get haunted by Pennywise in order. By the time I got to the fourth attack, I was completely checked out and I realized I had three more to go. 
It also doesn't help that none of the adult actors look even remotely close to the young ones. You lose that connection that the movie attempted to build early on by constantly jumping between these two timelines. Since the new It in Town stays within one decade, we have proper time to flesh out these characters. We see them be young adults as they rib each other about banging their moms and just taking a nice summer day swim in their tidy whiteies. That's not to say there's no moments like this in the 90s version, it's just they're all horribly cheesy. There's a classic TV show montage where two grown men share bicycle rides set to lame music. Then there's the dinner scene that looks like the opening of Roseanne. I was half hoping the queen of comedy herself, Roseanne Barr, would have shown up at the end with her trademark laugh. Guess I'll have to stick around for it to go back on TV, which it is. They're bringing Roseanne back. They're bringing everything back. Might as well. We have no original ideas left in the world. <laughs> I'm not gonna beat around the dick. 2017 had this feud in the bag the moment I got done watching it. So talking about action and effects, yeah, that's just like pouring salt on a severed arm. Fun fact, I had no idea 1990's It was a miniseries. I remember seeing the video at my local movie rental store, but never pulled the trigger on the purchase. I finally watched it for the first time last week and was amazed by how bad the quality was. I kept saying, wow, this looks like a straight-to-TV affair. Uh, it turns out I was spot on. The whole thing has a very low-budget look with over-the-top acting. The forest scene looks to have taken place on a small studio lot, and the scares are just tame, especially when compared by today's standards. Now, I do think this movie worked about as well as it could with the limitations it gave itself, but am I supposed to be nicer because of that? No. But Pennywise did scare the hell out of kids, and the TV movie certainly made history. I just can't pretend to like this. The first half is notably stronger than the second, I'll give it that. Mainly because the final act is laughably bad. Pennywise taking the form of a giant alien spider was definitely not in the budget. I was a bit bummed we didn't get to see the new version's take on that form, but what it did provide was more than enough excitement. The gore and overall spectacle? That's ramped way up. My favorite moment is around the middle of the picture when the kids are watching a slideshow that goes south real fast, when a giant Pennywise blows through the projector towards our helpless heroes. There are a lot of great moments like that. None of them are particularly scary. They're just really well made. The lighting, the score, the practical effects are all on point, and it's one of the rare times that a remake knocks it out of the park. 2017's It may be the new kid on the block, but it feels right at home. That was a sad attempt to shoehorn that movie reference in. I realize it was bad. Let's conclude. If you're new to my show Movie Feuds, let me clear something up for you. I don't make this a fair fight. I pick a side. Uh, so if you're going to try to yell at me in the comments or scold me and say this guy's biased. Uh, yeah, I am. 2017's the easy winner for me. You are free to explain while I'm wrong in the comments and I encourage you to voice your opinion. That's why you also get to vote on the winner for each of these episodes. This is more than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Oh, in a world where we now have remakes and sequels and sidequels and prequels every other day, it's really nice to get a win, isn't it? And I'm very hopeful that Chapter 2 retains that same level of quality. Just, a, just something to end on. Thanks for watching the video. Feel free to check me out on social media platforms for credibility purposes. Intern Sheila should be putting up some graphics for you to digest, I believe. Otherwise, you'll be out on the curb like your mom. Gotta move on. You can also check me out on patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Throw me a buck or two if you want. I run this channel alone. It's, a, it's almost a full-time job, honestly. Thanks for your time. Sheila, the graphics, now.